Because of white supremacy, I was myself with a lot of stereotypes and I could not learn about, about his psychedelic movement. I could not allow myself to trip because I was not sure enough. I was letting the stereotypes play a role and I was not really seeing the reality or uh, further away from what normally people talk about this. My family always tell me like, okay, you cannot go on drugs, you have to stay alert because you don't know what's gonna happen. Like the world is not a safe place for a black person. Like in, in a world that we have like racism and inequality, there's no safe space. Something can happen with you. So as I myself embodied this knowledge in a way that I don't allow me like to be high or to be out of my conscious many times. And this sometimes is kind of boring. Like I'm always uh, worried about, I'm, I'm in a diverse, diverse space. I am prioritizing right now actually figuring out how can people who are marginalized, anyone a part of any marginalized community, people of color, trans people, non-binary people, queer people, how do we access psychedelic healing? How do we access psychedelic healing in the context of therapy? How do we get the same equity that people who are in the center, people who are oftentimes white and straight and male and Christian, they're oftentimes getting access to these resources first, which in actuality is not that surprising because this, when I talk about psychedelic privilege, it's really very similar to all kinds of privilege, right? So this is not things that are unique to the psychedelic movement. This is actually issues that we have systemically in the United States and abroad. We have issues of racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, ableism, classism, that we're constantly working to shift and combat and change. I've seen this as a very wide movement because you have a lot of stigma on drugs, but not in psychedelics. So people in psychedelics are open to the new words and people in drugs are trapped. You see, there is a lot of difference in the way you talk about this. And I think you really have to like start to question ourselves why we're reproducing these stereotypes. And I feel sometimes in the psychedelics movement, people are reproducing these stereotypes. And this is, has a lot of to do with color, but has a lot of to do with gender, has a lot of to do with class also. And who has money to use this in really safe space and do not feel the consequence about that. What has been challenging though is getting people to have compassion for our communities that are affected by the harder drugs. That has been extremely difficult. It was difficult while I was only doing the meditation circles and it's still difficult in the plant medicine community. It's just, it's just you know, these are drugs, all of it. It's all drugs. <laughs> So, to like, like get off, we're human beings, grains of sand on a beach saying, you go that way, you go this way, but I found this way and I found that way. It's all drugs, okay? And we're all in the same boat together trying to figure things out. And the sooner we can stop having this hierarchical um, view of, well, I'm doing the ayahuasca and you're doing the, oh my God, the sooner we can end that shit is the, the better our, our community will be. I, when I posted my, my article on it, there was so much trolling, and Bia has talked about it in the conference. People were saying, you know, mainly that queer people, gender and sexually diverse people, that we don't need our separate spaces, or like saying that we don't need those separate spaces, that we, we're all one, we just need to be together, why are we trying to separate? And, um, but also like really, trolling at the same thing, coming for me, like misgendering me, um, you know, laughing at kind of the content that I'm, I'm putting at. Um, yeah, and just really going for it. We don't have a good affirming therapy for LGBTQ people. We have um, good therapists who do good work, but there's not been like any real look at, like what would it be like to offer 
a type of therapy that is psychedelic assisted for people who are suffering from the collective trauma and internalized homophobia and systemic oppression that being queer in a society engenders. In the new agey era of psychedelic medicine as well that's also overlaid onto ayahuasca is people talking about the divine feminine, the sacred masculine, you know, even though that kind of binary language is included, right? And so when we talk about, though that that's, this is flowery language that, you know, people do resonate with, you know, it's still instilling the binary. And it's saying that, like when people talk to me about energy, they say, oh, it's in this mushroom ceremony and I just felt this feminine presence and and it was just so feminine and I just felt held and I'm like what is femininity what did you feel you know we're attributing the binary to this infinite expression of energy that makes up reality